Hi, I'm Mike, founder of GoodBed.com. Today we're excited to be here to be reviewing a mattress that is really unlike any other mattress you've seen us review on our site, or for that matter, that you've seen reviewed on any site. We're gonna be reviewing an ultra luxury mattress, and it's from a company called Hestens, which is a Swedish company. And full disclosure, I'm Swedish. So I may be a little bit biased, but of course I'll try to keep it neutral like I always do. And in terms of the review, we're gonna really be applying our same normal review framework because we think that that is the best, most consistent way to evaluate really any mattress. But where this review will differ a little bit from our other reviews is that we're gonna spend a lot more time talking about the materials and the construction in this mattress. Because when you're talking about a mattress that costs thirty-five dollars to $40,000, like the one that I'm sitting on right at this very moment, there's just a lot more that goes into it. Um, so, you know, people, a lot of people on our site, they want to know what's in a mattress that can make it cost so much. Well, we're going to show you, we're going to literally show you exactly what's inside this mattress and walk you through each of those materials and some of these construction uh, methods that are a little bit less familiar than, uh, to you than some of the other mattresses that, uh, that you may have seen. So let's get started. So Hestens is a company that's been around since the mid 1800s, and they're actually a sixth generation family run business. And they've been selling in Europe for most of that time. However, they're much newer to North America. They've only been selling in the United States for maybe 15 or 20 years. And every single Hestens bed though is still made in a single factory in a small town in Sweden by a tight-knit group of, of factory workers. And it's made by hand with excruciating care and detail. So there's really a lot of rich history that goes into every Heston's bed. And currently in the United States, Heston's offers five models. Uh, they start at 12,000 in a queen size and they go up to 150,000 in a queen size. Right now we are on the 2000T, which is the second model from the top. And this is a model that costs 35,000 in a queen size or 40,000 in a king size. Now, one of the things I wanna point out is that each of the prices that I just mentioned uh, really relates to everything that you can see here. It's a full setup that comes with each Heston's mattress, which is really comprised of three separate components. Uh, the top mattress, or what we might call a topper. Um, then you have the mattress itself, and then you have the box spring. And so they're sold as a full set. And in fact, included in the price of any Heston's is the ability to personalize each side of the mattress to exactly the comfort preference of that sleeper. So all of that is, it's a very personalized product and kind of all of that is just baked into buying a Heston's mattress. So now let's dive into what's actually in the Heston's mattress. And as you can see here, we're looking at a cutaway that shows you exactly what's inside this very mattress right here, the 2000T. And we've got each of the three layers. This is the topper right here. Then from here to here is the mattress itself right here. And from here down is the box spring right here. And one of the things you'll notice right off the bat, of course, is that the height of this is different than the height of that. And that has to do with the fact that this in particular, this layer in particular, is cinched down effectively by, by the tufting. They essentially pull thread all the way through the mattress and, and they actually tie the two sides together in that way, which what that does is it basically compresses all of this um, sort of fluffier stuff down to a relatively compressed thin uh, layer on each side of the coils. So the overall height of the unit becomes much closer to just the overall height of the coils, as you can see here. The same is true to a lesser degree uh, in the box spring layer. Um, so now let's go into what's actually in this. And before we get into kind of a, a layer by layer analysis, I want you to just take note of how thick this is. I mean, usually we're talking about mattresses that are 10 inches thick, maybe 12. In the case of some luxury mattresses, you might be looking at even 15, 16, 17 inches. This here is uh, all 
together, um, you know, something closer to two feet or so. And it's not just, the, the box spring itself is not just uh, basic coils. Even that has two layers of coils as well as horsetail in it. So you can't even just discount this box spring as something that's just um, separate from the mattress entirely. In fact, if you were to lay on this box spring by itself, which we did, it almost feels as comfortable as a lot of mattresses. Um, so this all together, there's just a lot going on here. But if I had to summarize the whole big picture here with one word, it would be natural. Everything here is 100% natural, um, or at least doesn't involve chemicals to speak of, other than perhaps, you know, to the extent required to make steel, for example. But what you're looking at in each of these layers, I mean, this is a uh, horsetail, which is by far the kind of most unique as well as um, very uh, prevalently used component of a Heston's mattress. In fact, the name Heston's means horses in Swedish. So uh, that's obviously something that they view as fundamental to the Heston's mattress experience. Um, other, ingredient, other components that you see included here would be this here, which is a blend of, of uh, New Zealand lamb's wool, Egyptian cotton, and um, also mohair, which is the hair of a goat. Um, and you also have um, flax, which comes from the stem of the linen plant. Um, and you also have here, this is uh, Swedish pine, which actually is grown in a forest that Heston's maintains itself. Basically, they have a, a company forest where they grow their own wood. Um, and what's unique about their wood is that Swedish pine, because Sweden gets so much less daylight or sunlight than other parts of the world, pine is actually a pretty hard wood there, unlike maybe in the United States where it tends to grow in, in the southern United States with lots of sun and, and, um, and it grows, you know, there's a lot of uh, space between each ring. You can see here the, the rings are very tight together, which means it's a denser, harder, stronger wood uh, in Sweden. So that's why they, they use their Swedish pine. Um, and the other thing to note about the, the steel that they use is it's, it's Swedish virgin steel, which basically means it's not recycled. And the benefit of that, according to the company, is that as steel is recycled, it loses some of its longevity properties, some of the properties that give it its longevity. And the contention on their part is that as uh, when, you, when you make recycled steel, you have to actually re-inject some of that, some of that ore into the steel in order to kind of reinvigorate it as, as the recycled steel is made. Whereas with virgin steel, that is not required. It has all of that original uh, strength property uh, right there in it. And as a result, it's gonna retain its shape over a longer period of time. So um, that's the, the, the principle behind their steel. And um, overall, I wanna just talk about the horsehair because the horsetail really is what kind of distinguishes the Heston's mattress. Um, both the quantity of horsetail as well as what goes into the horsetail. Um, the horsetail that you see here, it probably doesn't look to you like you think of a horse's tail looking. Um, you know, the horsetail that you see in a violin bow is straight. The horsetail, for that matter, that you see coming out of the horse is pretty straight, usually. Um, what they do to create, to give it this curly springiness is, is a pretty involved process. And the best way I can think of to explain it is that if you can imagine, especially uh, for women, having your hair braided uh, and then going swimming and then letting your hair dry and then taking the braid out. Generally speaking, your hair is gonna maintain a lot of the curliness right when you take that braid out. And effectively, that's what they've done here. In fact, quite literally, they did braid the horse hair. They first boil it in oil uh, about five different times, letting it dry each time and then reboiling it to kind of give it a, a softness and malleability. Then they go ahead and braid it uh, really tightly. And then they bake that to kind of cure it or set it. Um, and they do that um, and then they let it sort of sit there for a long time. And when they finally take the, the, the undo the braid, it, it has like retained that curly property, that springiness 
um, and you could just see, you pull on any, any strand of this, it springs right back. And as a result, you take you know, thousands and thousands of these strands and you put them together, and, and together the whole thing has a, a real unique springiness and softness to it. It's, um, it's, quite, a, it's quite a unique feeling. And at the same time, it's not dense. It's, it's almost weightless. Um, you can lift this whole thing up. I mean, it's just, it's almost entirely weightless. So um, there's naturally a lot of airflow there, which of course creates a much uh, cooler sleeping experience when you're dealing with a mattress that is almost entirely air, all this stuff. This is almost entirely air, of course, it's coils. And then again, so there's, there's all this airflow coming through a mattress like this that's just giving it a natural breathability to it. Um, so that's really where the horse hair comes in. It gives it a, a resiliency, a springiness, a comfort, um, a breathability, and, and even a, a, a certain amount of pressure relief as well. And the pocketed coils allow the mattress to conform and support your body. The, having as many coils as they do, they have uh, uh, over 3,000 coils, I believe, in this model when you take all the different layers together. Uh, there, it creates um, a lot of conformance to your body as well as a good amount of bounce that we'll, we'll show you later in the video. The other thing we wanted to mention was that as we explained earlier, each Heston's mattress can be customized on each side to meet the softness level preference of that sleeper. And the way they do that, the way they alter the softness or feel of the mattress is through the gauge or thickness of the wire used in the coils here in the mattress. So essentially they use a thicker, firmer, stronger coil if you want a firmer feel or a softer, thinner steel if you want, um, if you want a softer feel. And actually that's an interesting uh, point about that is that as a result, because of uh, how, much, how many coils are used in this mattress, if you choose a firmer mattress from Heston's, it's gonna actually weigh uh, notably more than a softer mattress will because of the, the, there's just more wire effectively, more steel in the mattress. Um, but overall, <laughs> this, it should also be noted that when you take all the steel and all this dense wood and, and just this, all this mattress, <laughs> when you add it all together in a king size, this, this model here weighs over 500 pounds. So all this together is quite a substantial product that uh, really cannot be compared to uh, a lot of other mattresses you're gonna see out there. So now we're gonna talk about the two things that everybody absolutely must get from their mattress, which are back support and pressure relief. And I'm gonna sit down on this Heston's on my back because that's the position that I personally sleep in for the majority of the night. So I'll start there. Um, and just for context, I'm about six feet tall and not quite 200 pounds. And we also wanna let you know that the Heston's mattress that we are on is, has been customized uh, to have a medium f softness level on this side and a firm softness level on that side. So they are definitely two different feels. And I'm starting on the medium because that's really the side that's better matched for me in terms of my size, weight, comfort preference, uh, and for that matter, sleep position. So as you can see here in this position, my spine is very well aligned. Um, the mattress is able to reach up and kind of support this lumbar area while my hips settle down just a bit into the mattress, um, which is also important to maintaining that proper curvature of the spine in this position. Um, so really, I feel like for me, this is, the, this is certainly the, 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 the perfect softness level to be on my back. And in terms of, you know, I, I won't bother talking about every person's size and weight because Heston's has options for pretty much everybody's configuration. They're not a one size fits all type of operation. Uh, your Heston's retailer is gonna be able to help you find the, the, the model and the softness level that's gonna offer you the right back support. But I just kinda wanted to illustrate what it looks like uh, when you found that good back support. And just to contrast that, I would say, um, you know, if I were to be on my stomach on this particular model, um, I think I would still be okay on the medium, but let's say we were on the soft model, uh, I think it, I can already tell from how the medium feels 
that the, getting any softer probably wouldn't, I wouldn't be well suited for if I were a stomach sleeper. However, if I were to go over to the firm side on my stomach, what I can see is that this is actually brilliant. It feels, it feels great as a back sleeper, I mean as a stomach sleeper. It feels great for, in terms of my spinal alignment, um, where my hips are not sinking at all into the mattress. I'm really being properly supported in this position. So you're, in other words, you're gonna need to find the Heston's model that, that fits your particular needs and whatever those needs are, there's going to be a good option for you. So now I'm gonna switch over to my side here to look at the pressure relief of this mattress because that's really the position that you can best assess the pressure relief of any mattress since it's the position when your body's weight is distributed over the smallest surface area. And I'm gonna be particularly watching my shoulders and hips to feel for any possible pressure points. And what, what I can say to you is that this is a mattress, uh, this frankly kind of surprised me a little bit because what you're getting your pressure relief from here is this, principally this topper, this, this top mattress, which is mostly horsehair with that kind of a uh, couple layers of that blended wool, cotton, mohair. And, you know, I, I wasn't sure whether that was gonna give me, um, you know, what kind of pressure relief I was gonna get from that. But what I can tell you is that the pressure relief on this is really great. Uh, I mean, I'm on the medium side again, um, and I have absolutely no pressure points whatsoever. So somehow, <laughs> Those materials, which frankly are not materials that I'm super familiar with from other mattresses that we've looked at. Um, so I wasn't exactly familiar with their pressure relieving properties, but they're very good at this. Um, and somehow they managed to do it, of course, in a very natural way. So you're, you're, you're getting those really excellent pressure relieving characteristics without any foams or other types of chemicals. So, uh, I'm definitely impressed with the pressure relieving characteristics of this mattress. So now we're gonna get into some of the preference-based characteristics that really kind of describe what the overall experience is of being on a mattress. And the first of these is what we call responsiveness. And in this grand scheme of mattresses, what this means is where does it fall in terms of the degree of memory feel, for example, that slow responding, melting into the bed kind of feel, versus bounciness or quick response. And there is a spectrum there and there is really no better or worse on that spectrum. Uh, there's really just what your personal preference is. So uh, let's take a look at where this one falls. And we usually think of this um, in three ways. We try to think of it as sort of what you're experiencing on the surface of the mattress, what you're experiencing with like a little bit more pressure that where you get into like maybe the three or four inches deep into the mattress. And then what do you get from that deep experience, like what we call like a deep bounce. Um, so let's start with the surface here. And just if you notice here, there's really, um, there's not a lot of what we would call surface bounce. I mean, the horse tail does have a little bit of springiness, but in the context of this uh, topper, it's not quite what we would call like a lot of surface bounce. Um, but what you, where you start to see the bounce, which there definitely is bounce in this mattress, it's when you drop a bowling ball. This is a 16 pound bowling ball. And I'm gonna hold it up high, higher than we normally do just to give it a consistent height above the mattress from how we do other tests. And you definitely see this bounces up uh, more than, than on you know, a lot of the mattresses that you might look at in a store that are all foam perhaps, or. Um, even just have a lot of memory foam or something on top. And if I pull back that horsehair topper, you see even more bounce um, because really that horsehair is absorbing a lot of the, the impact of the ball. And then what it's also we're gonna do is, is, uh, is test out the deep bounce where I can just kind of jump on the mattress and you see that's where you really get a sense of the bounce in this mattress because as I put 200 pounds of weight down on the mattress, it springs right back up. And that's really, I think, the most reflective of the responsiveness of this mattress. So overall, as you would expect from a mattress that has as many coils as this one does, um, there's, there's a lot of uh, responsive, quick response to this mattress. We would definitely put it over on that quick response side of the spectrum. 
no matter which of the Heston's models you choose. The next thing we like to look at in thinking about a mattress is cushioning depth. Some people prefer to sleep in the mattress and some people really prefer to float on top of the mattress. And what we can tell you about the, the Hestons, and this is really true of any of their configurations, is that you're definitely gonna get more of that sensation of sleeping in your mattress, um, kind of being cradled by it. Um, it's not though the same sensation that you might have, certainly not the same as that you'd have on a memory foam mattress when you sleep in the mattress. There's definitely none of that feeling of being uh, stuck or anything like that. It's actually more just sort of like, like you're nestled in a little bit. Um, and it just sort of like the, the, this top mattress kind of nestles around you. And part of the sensation has to do with the fact that the top mattress isn't attached. So even just if you notice this edge, it kind of, as I lay here, it, it forces the edge up a little bit around you. And that, that even happens in the center of the mattress a little bit. It, it's just part of the dynamic that the Heston's experience is, is trying to create to, so that you feel kind of nestled into the bed. So this is definitely gonna be a, a great match for people who like that feeling. Another characteristic we like to look at in a mattress is motion isolation, which as you may know is to what degree is the person on this side of the mattress going to be affected by or even aware of motion or activity over on this side of the mattress. Uh, so to test this, we have this 16 pound bowling ball and we're gonna start by just dropping this on the bed and just to see, and as you can see, the bowling pin does not tip over, um, but it does move a little bit. Um, and the next thing we can do is just put it to a more rigorous standard where I can just kind of pop into bed like that. Obviously not the most considerate way to get into bed if I'm trying not to disturb my partner over here, but just to give you a sense of the relative motion isolation properties, um, the bowling pin obviously did tip over there. And there's a couple reasons for that. But for, first of all, I want to explain why the motion isolation here is overall good, which is that this is a pocketed coil mattress. So the coils are able to move independently on each side of the bed. Um, that's why the bowling pin didn't tip over when I dropped the ball. Why it tipped over when I uh, jumped onto the bed it has more to do with uh, uh, partly this cover here, which is again, totally detached from the bed. So as I jump down here, the cover is able to even slide a little bit, which can cause uh, some motion disturbance on the other side of the bed. Um, but however, that is not the entire explanation because we did test this same thing without the cover and we did get the same result. So overall, we would say that on this particular characteristic, this mattress is good, but it's not the best. The next thing we're going to talk about is ease of repositioning, which can be a particular concern when you're talking about a mattress that has deeper cushioning like this one does. But the thing we want to make clear in this case is that this mattress is actually quite easy to reposition on, which is a real paradox because in most cases, if you want that sensation of being kind of uh, cradled by or hugged by your mattress, you're going to get, have some difficulty in repositioning. Um, you're going to have a little bit of that maybe sense of being stuck in a hole or with the sort of heavy something around you. Um, in this case, the cushioning is very fluffy and light. The horsehair uh, does nestle around you, but it doesn't in any way impede your, your movements. So it's a really rare combination and a nice strength of this mattress. The next thing we're gonna talk about is temperature because a lot of people have a concern about sleeping hot on a mattress. And again, this can be a particular concern with a mattress that has deeper cushioning, for example. Uh, and this is an area where the Heston's mattress really excels. Um, and the story as to how it you know, regulates your temperature has a lot of different components. They talk about how the wool up near the surface is a naturally temperature regulating material. Uh, they talk about how the horsetail has a naturally tubular structure, which apparently makes it a very effective uh, moisture wicker. Um, but the thing that really stands out to me as it relates to temperature is how much airflow there is in this mattress. Um, when we showed you the cutaway, you saw how just much of it was air. I mean, <laughs> we, the, the horsehair itself is, is almost all air. It has almost no weight or, or density to it. Um, 
The, the springs, of course, are almost entirely air as, as it relates to the space that they consume. So really, you're just more so than almost any other mattress you can find. You're gonna get so much airflow on this mattress, which just allows your body to breathe. And that, more than anything, is gonna be what keeps you cool during the night. Another thing we talk about in most of our reviews is natural materials, because a lot of people want a mattress that's made with natural materials, or at least want to be sure that their mattress wasn't made with harmful chemicals. And in this case, what we can say is that the Heston's bed, again, really excels in this area. As we showed you before, this mattress is almost entirely natural materials, top to bottom. The only thing that maybe you wouldn't include in that is the steel coils but everything else in this mattress is literally biodegradable. Um, and it uses a litany of, of interesting and unique natural materials to create this very unique feel. Uh, everything from the horsetail that we've talked about at length, the wool, the, the mohair, the, or, uh, the cotton, the, uh, the wood that they use in the base. Um, and all of these different materials uh, work together to create a very, very natural experience on this mattress. Um, the one thing we want to clarify is that this is not technically an organic mattress. There are mattresses that, that uh, go to a, a greater length to obtain a certification of organic status, but at the same time, you'd be hard pressed to find a mattress that is more natural than this one. Another consideration that can be important for some people is edge support. So we always like to check this out when we look at a mattress. And, and as you can see here, uh, I'm sitting on the edge and there is some amount of, of dip here, but it's nothing that's gonna make me feel uh, like I'm sliding off the mattress or unstable in any way. And in fact, this is on the medium side of the mattress. The firmer side has even a stronger edge because it has sturdier or uh, firmer coils underneath. Uh, but we wanted to show you on, on this side to give you a, a sense of even how the, the medium works. Um, now, the coils on the edge are the same as the coils in the middle of the mattress, but they actually, on each of the four corners, they even have um, one coil that has more turns and a much thicker gauge, um, just to make sure that the corners of the mattress are extra strong from an edge support standpoint. But let's take a look at just how the edge of the mattress looks when I am laying on it. Um, and I always like to just get my shoulder blade kind of right on the edge of the mattress for a consistent feel. And what I can tell you is that I can lay right here and I'm not feeling any sense of being thrown out of the bed or kind of that the edge is going to collapse on me. And I'm sure you can see here that my body is, is well supported by the mattress, even in this position. So, we would definitely say that the Hestons has good edge support. One thing that we don't typically talk about in our reviews is aesthetics, because with most mattresses, you're only gonna see them when you're changing your sheets, really, and every other time, they're gonna be covered up. Uh, but that's something that's really unique about the Hestons here, is that really what they recommend and what most people do is only cover up this top thing, this top mattress, with an ordinary fitted sheet, and the rest of the mattress uh, and the box spring are fully exposed and they're part of your bedroom just like any other piece of furniture. And as a result, they offer this in 16 different fabrics, all of which are checked because that is the, the, the classic Heston's look and uh, many of which come in sort of that blue classic check, which is really as instantly recognizable a symbol of luxury and quality, uh, at least in some circles, as a Rolls Royce hood ornament. And that is something that will be just part of your bedroom. And so it's a really unique uh, part of the Heston's experience. And it extends even to uh, these nameplates on the bottom, which, which they will customize to you with your own name engraved on them if you'd like, or whatever you'd like to be have engraved on them. So it's really uh, something that I think is worth considering when you're thinking about a Heston's because it is part of the ownership experience. One characteristic that not all mattresses have is the ability to personalize each side of the mattress uh, to the preferences of that sleeper. Um, we call this dual comfort, and this is definitely that, something that's part of the Heston's experience. It comes just sort of standard with every Heston's mattress. Um, and 
So this is a great feature if you're someone uh, that has very different sleep needs or preferences than your partner, for example. In this particular case, we've got this mattress configured with uh, firm over here and medium over here. And actually the difference is not in these two box springs uh, and it's not in this top uh, padding here. With the, there's no difference in the amount of horsetail used or anything like that. The difference is within this mattress, uh, the coils over on this side are just a thicker, firmer gauge than the coils on this side. And it's a noticeable difference in feel. I can attest to the, the fact that there's no question you're on a firm side here and on a medium side here. So uh, they offer, in fact, four different comfort choices. It goes from extra firm, firm, then medium, all the way to soft. So we're really looking at the two kind of middle versions, and even with those, it's a noticeable difference. So you're gonna be able to get something that's personalized to your needs, which is gonna be particularly valuable if you and your partner want something different. So one thing we talk about in every review we do is value. But how do you even begin to think about value when you're talking about an ultra luxury mattress like this? Well, when we think about value, we always think about it in terms of what does it cost, what's in it, and how long do we think it's going to last? In terms of the price, the Heston's line starts at about 12,000 in a queen and goes to 150,000. This particular model we're on is the second from the top, and it costs 35,000 in a queen or 40,000 in a king. And these prices are inclusive of everything you see here in terms of uh, all three components, the top mattress, the middle section, and the box spring, as well as the customization of each side to meet the preferences of each partner. In terms of the materials and the, the craftsmanship of this mattress, the sort of what's in it, the Heston's is uh, by far the biggest driver of the cost on the material side is the horsetail. We talked about how that is both what gives the mattress its unique feel and many unique properties, but it's also the most expensive material used. It's hard to come by and also they go to great lengths to treat the horsehair uh, in such a way that gives it its unique properties uh, when used in the mattress. Um, just to give you a sense of the price of horsehair, the uh, horsetail used in a violin bow would cost $125 or so. And we showed you the volume of horsehair <laughs> used in this mattress, and you can tell it's many violins could, could get bows <laughs> from this horsetail. Um, so there's obviously a lot of just raw material costs that go into this mattress. But in addition to that, there's also a ton of craftsmanship. I mean, there are people working at this factory in Sweden who have dedicated literally their lives to making mattresses for Heston's. Um, and for a bed like this, for this specific bed, 40 hours of work from those workers goes into the making of each mattress, which by comparison purposes, a, a typical mattress in a mass production facility in America might have minutes of labor going into it, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so, they can pull the whole thing together. So it's just a different beast in that respect. Um, so in terms of how long it's going to last, I think that's one of the things that you really should consider when, when buying a Heston's. You're gonna be making this purchase really for life. Uh, there's a, a 25 year warranty, but it's, you should expect that you're gonna keep this mattress for the rest of your life. The, certainly this piece and this piece should never wear out. Um, the only piece that you might replace is this top layer, this top mattress. The horse hair uh, could become, um, you know, just overly compressed over time and you might decide you wanna freshen up the mattress with a new top mattress. But the rest of this is a, a, a piece of furniture, a mattress, that you will never need to replace. Um, and there also are things you can do to make sure that it, it retains its longevity. Um, with regards to the top mattress, they recommend that you actually massage the, the horsehair by kind of rolling it up and then kind of massaging it, which, which sort of restores its uh, springiness. Um, and with regards to this mattress, uh, it can be flipped and should be flipped periodically in order to make sure that it, it uh, retains its even surface integrity. Um, 
And of course, the other thing that, that uh, we, we want to just briefly mention with regards to this part of the mattress is that these tufts here run all the way through the mattress. And as we described when we showed you the materials, they, they are basically um, clamping down a lot of material in here. It's, like, it's, it's, it's inches and inches of horsetail and wool and things like that that are compressed down to maybe an inch or two by the, the top fabric with these strong tufts that run all the way through the mattress. That's what prevents this, this mattress from um, retaining body impressions. That combined with the fact that you're gonna periodically flip it uh, to even it out is, is what makes you uh, sure that you're not gonna have to worry about surface integrity of this mattress the way you might with even other luxury mattresses that you're gonna find out there that aren't um, you know, this level of ultra luxury. So that's really how we would think about value is it, it's not a mattress that frankly, everyone's gonna be able to afford, period. But for those who can't afford it, it very well may be the last mattress you ever buy. And it is certainly a mattress that a lot goes into. So you can feel that you're getting a lot for your money. So just to sum up some of the things we've covered in this video, the Hestons is an ultra luxury mattress that really does offer a, a unique experience. And obviously, just based on the price point alone, this mattress is not for everyone. But what we want you to take away from this video is that the use of this detachable top mattress uh, with the quantity of horsetail in this mattress really does create a truly unique experience that's almost hard to describe. To give you some examples, it offers excellent pressure relief without the use of any foam. It offers temperature regulation without any chemicals. And it offers that feeling of snuggling into your bed, being kind of nestled by your bed without adding any difficulty of repositioning. All of these are, are paradoxes when you think about a mattress traditionally, but that's what's unique about the Hestons is that they've figured out how to, how to give you both sides of those two paradoxes, of those, of those paradoxes. And so if you're someone for whom, let's say natural materials are really important, or you're someone who values the rich history and just the amount of work and craftsmanship that goes into every Heston's mattress. Um, and you're someone who wants the trademark Heston's aesthetic, that symbol of, of quality on display in your bedroom on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to enjoy that. And if the other considerations that we described to you in this video feel like a good match for you, then we definitely think that the Heston's could be a great fit for you. So we hope you found this video helpful in learning more about Heston's mattresses and the 2000T model in particular. For more helpful information about finding the right mattress for you, go to goodbed.com. In the meantime, thanks for watching and we hope you sleep well.